I bring an FCS powerhouse and last year's FCS national championship winner to D1 to rebuild them. I'm going to give myself five years to take them to the promised land. Okay, we need a lot of stuff. And our first game of D1 will be against Oklahoma. Of all schools, Oklahoma. Let's see if we can't get some of these three stars and see if they turn out to be something good. Okay, I've already given up. <laughs> they weren't very good. We have nine players. Luke Harris is a 75. Wait, 94 Excel, 61 speed. What could that possibly be? Like, he's a wide receiver, but that can't be possible. I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to work it out at a later date. I have no fluffing idea what he is. That seems kind of fair, to be honest. C's across the board. I wonder if that would happen in real life. If South Dakota State were to hypothetically versus Oklahoma, what is the score going to be? And then we pumped another FCS team, which makes sense because we're the FCS national champions last year. Playing style deal breaker. What does that even mean? It is low lock cheese week though. And even though I'm not going to go incredibly overboard with it, I do need to fill a lot of positions here. A defensive tackle, a defensive end. This is another question I have. If an FCS powerhouse like South Dakota State were to come to D1, surely just because of the exposure that you would get at least in those first couple years a lot of players would more than likely lean towards joining that new program correct a five-star tight end okay where is the five-star tight end i got one tj doyle no a's but a lot of b's 79. Look how consistent the catching stat is. And he's got the speed and excel. And the reason that's important, six foot six, 250. Trent Jackson went up to a 79 from a 70. You know what? I might keep the 700 on the quarterback. Will Kenny Dukes be able to get it done though? I could have easily just gone in, gotten a low lock cheese quarterback. He is a scrambler, which is not exactly the style I wanted. But considering the uphill battle I'm expecting, this might not be a bad choice. Throwing stats are just terrible, but he can break a tackle. Then there's also players like like Jakari Falk, who I really need to get because 77 overall, the bonus isn't great and we're going up against Bama. Oh yeah, let's first rank Tulane. I'm actually watching them versus Ole Miss right now. And man, they are putting up a good fight. Will we put up a good fight though? Beautiful. That's going to be a lot of points back. Kevin Dukes as well. Got the quarterback. And for all of you who watch majority of the NCAA 14 rebuild, today I'm not trying to go with an overpowered approach per se. We do have a couple of five stars, but enough to where it's like not OP and it will be a struggle that fifth and final year. Okay, that is a big visit. Yeah, we need more players, man. <laughs> we have six players in total. There we go. We beat Texas State. That's our first win against a D1 team. We now have three big dogs coming in on that week 11 week. Pretty decent lead. It looks like Texas has decided to get back in that battle. Coach Prime trying to get the tight end now. Kevin Pope kind of just came out of nowhere. Six foot eight, 275, 655 squat. Oregon really wants me to give up on Kevin Pope here, but I'm not going to, so stop asking. More people coming in on that Arkansas State week. We now have seven visits scheduled. TJ Doyle committed. We didn't even need to bring him in for a visit. He said, fluff the visit. Coach, I'm joining right now. I like the heart, young fella. Okay, yeah, this is too many people coming in for a visit here. I'm going to have to jump into this game and at least make sure that we win. Oh, yeah, out stadiums closed down for construction we're installing a jacuzzi on the second level isn't that right nemo ulm totally let us use their stadium oh wait this isn't madden <laughs> i just tried to playmaker that guy we can't punt this ball we have to go for it i'm not even sending pressure it's too easy another dot to our tight end who's gonna get replaced next year what a block Ah, oh, we have no speed. Surely you score from here, right? 20-0, you got to give the controller to somebody else. And there we go, Kenny Guerrero, Trent Jackson, and Jakari Falk. Three monstrous pickups for us. So I know for a fact that our D-line that final year is going to be a problem for everybody. Okay, I'd say that's a pretty decent season for our first season in D1. 4-8 record. Okay. Unfortunately, they won't be there for the final year of the rebuild. Talk about firepower. We only got the two O-linemen, so I'm thinking we have to go all out on the O-linemen here. We also have John Moore, who is, of course, the other wide receiver. So maybe we are a passing team. Well, in all seriousness, Kevin Pope looks like he's in the bag. So let's go 6.5k into him. And then John Moore is going to get 9,000 because if we're able to get... A six foot six wide receiver? That is gonna be a problem for a lot of teams to try and defend, you know? And we got both of them, as well as Larry Grigsby. So not bad. I don't think we signed a lot of players, but we had a lot of quality scattered in amongst a lot of 
team needs as well. Oh my goodness, Luke Harris is a 74 fullback. He's a good tight end. And he's also an O-lineman. Kenny Guerrero going to go over to right end. So that way we have two freshmen that are ready to dominate. Need to work on the secondary though. We only got one cornerback and zero safeties. We got Wake Forest, then LSU, then three bye games. <laughs> Getting him out of the way early. Beautiful free safeties. They're not very good, but do need a running back. So Jesse Duckett might not be the worst thing in the world. Plus, free safeties technically could go to cornerback as well. So even if they're not the greatest straight away, at least we have some depth at that position. This is the tough thing about being an FCS school in D1. Again, I got eight players, and they all just don't look very good. Greg Hill does go up to a 64, though. So I guess... It is nice. <laughs> the reason I allow myself to get Insta commit is because it doesn't even matter. It doesn't mean we sign anybody anyway, because I'm just unlucky like that. <laughs> We're only barely going to lose to Wake, though. That's kind of nice. Yes, we got an Insta commit. You know what? Just because you committed, I'm going to try and find a spot for you. Okay, there appears to be a five star athlete that nobody wants. There's also a five star quarterback, Kyle Brink. And it looks like we're definitely going to become a passing team here. Oh, I saw a three-star strong safety, Damon Anderson. Okay, could be something nice. I didn't find any tackles, but I did manage to find quite a few guards, which I guess could make the transition. Hopefully, this quarterback turns out to be something good. He's a 74. Although, Kevin Richardson, this guy's a gem, 78 overall. So, it looks like we will be rocking with the original quarterback that we got. Manny going up to a 75. Willie Battle going up to a 75 as well. Damon Anderson, though. I'm sorry, I gotta cut him. 58 overall is just not it. Bro, Insta commit is so ass. Like, I swear it doesn't even work. Yes, okay, it does work. Antonio Inman as well is another cornerback. And so is Rhett Williams. So we have the secondary, but that kind of takes away our running backs, which is why I'm gonna go into Clayton Canary. Big win over Coastal Carolina. Clayton Canary, come on, bro. Yes, okay, man. Manny Weddle looks to be in the bag, and I might even try and get Willie Battle. Then again, I'm not going back in a low lock cheese, so whatever we have here is kind of what we're stuck with. Gonna have to go some more weeks here. I tried to get some Insta commits. Patrick Davidson and Tim Edwards both declined, but we have a bunch of solid recruits coming in for the Raj and Karjans week. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I wouldn't want to sign here. Hey, come in versus this Raj and Karjans week. Proceeds to get blown out. We did manage to pick up a wide receiver and a left guard, though so that's the O-line done. I'm just concerned about our quarterback. I don't even know what his awareness is at. So he has 70 awareness, which isn't bad. When it comes down to the simulation, awareness is king, you know? Beautiful, bolstering up the defense and the running back position. That might be it. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to sign many other players that we have on the board here. But we did get a really solid class all around. Majoritively, it is those mid-60 overalls. Law friendly. Definitely a step back in season two. We go again. Nobody's leaving. Everybody's staying loyal. Everybody's trusting the process. Never been so proud to be a jackrabbit. And we got dude from Alabama who's really going to help out our wide receiver. Evan Sullivan might not help out our team that much, though. Gracefully declined this. Top five class. It was a very good class, I will say that. So Dusty Hill is going to go from defensive end to linebacker. In fact, we're going to move him to left outside linebacker, where he'll be standing at six foot seven, 260 pounds. Okay, Tim Edwards just said, fluff that, I'm not a cornerback. What are you then? So the biggest problem that I see with this team right now, the secondary. Everything else, especially the D-line and the linebacking core, is OP. We have wide receivers who are like mountains. Bunch of six foot five guys over there. This year in recruiting, the only thing that we need to go after is the secondary. Shaz Preston, the Alabama transfer, going up to an 89. Kevin Duke's gone up to a 74. That is a big boy increase. He also got the awareness upgrade. John Moore going up to an 82. That's not too bad. Demarcus Bell also up to an 80. And look at this, 81 at left end, 86 at right end. So this is the biggest year of the rebuild this far. Is our freshman Dukes ready for prime time? And more importantly, will TJ Doyle live up to the hype? These two are the ones I got my eyes set on the most. So let's stop playing around. We don't need anything but cornerback. And this is what I'm talking about. How am I meant to do anything with a bunch of one stars like this? We're going to grab a bunch of four star safeties. Five star corner is 79. Okay, bunch of 78s there too. We surprisingly have a decent bonus on 
a lot of the corners. A 240 bonus on Brad Hunter. Gonna start off with a pretty close win against FCS. Number one player in the nation, Wesley Hill, 631.99. Looks like he could be a corner. There's a lot of fantastic outside linebackers here, which isn't really what we're after, but they're worth at least looking at. And I guess we round it off with athletes and just pray that they turn out to be corners. Out of all the corners and safeties we went after, there was only two that there was a potential chance of getting. It could even be Dwan Tremblay right now. Insta commit, I love you. And look at that, B, B minus and B. So the team is coming together very nicely here. We're also one and one. Our best start to date. Okay, we have like five chances. Surely we get one of them. We get Brooks Larson. He's an outside linebacker, but it helps. Just to finish off the team, round it out, I couldn't see it going much better than this. We turned our biggest weakness into one of the strongest parts of the team. Nice. Mobley potentially as a quarterback. So is Wesley Hill. It's going to be a really tough offseason because I didn't go out and sign Dukes just to replace him. Like, I signed him because I didn't want to be overpowered. So I'm thinking that is going to be my guy. There's no way they set us up versus Georgia. Like, it wasn't even that bad of a loss. And you know what? I will take that. Six and six is phenomenal. Considering this was the first year for all of our players, let's go check out how the bloody Rapscallions did. Kevin Dukes, 109.5 rating, 3,000 yards, 23 touchdowns, 19 picks. This is a phenomenal start to your career. On the ground game, Kevin Dukes also scrambled for 721 yards. He is a scrambler, remember? Shaz Preston with nearly 1,000 yards. Bugs Mortimer with 713. The freshman putting up 302. Kenny Guerrero, freshman, 24 TFLs, five and a half sacks. This guy's going to be 99 and he's going in the first round of the draft. I guarantee it. And the fact that we went six and six, it's our first bowl game. It also means that we're not going to get fired here. We hit our quota. That's all that matters. So we can go all in on Andrew Sanders here, even though we already got a free safety. I'm taking a 77 if it's just going to fall in me lap, you know? Wesley Hill, I'm looking for you to be a corner, which is a 77. Looking at our cornerbacks, though, once Cayman Mills gets out of the way, we have Dwan Tremblay, Wesley Hill, and then, of course, John Baker and everybody below him. At free safety, we have Andrew Sanders and Kevin Castillo. Kevin Castillo will move to strong safety. That's pretty much it. The cornerbacks could be a little bit better. And, of course, we signed a bunch of linebackers here. Nice. So we do have a bunch of 90s. Unfortunately, they're not our players. Kenny Guerrero is a 90. Some decent hit power, some decent power move. 96 finesse, 98 block shedding. That's why this guy is a monster. 91 play wreck as well. Kenny Duke's going up to a 79. The most important thing to note is the plus five to awareness. We're going to let the computer go ahead and recruit depth for the squad. As you can see, we have no positions needed. We've done a phenomenal job in three years. Our class is only at sophomore, so we have to simulate two seasons. I will catch you guys for training results and stats by the year. All right, we're coming in B, B plus, and B. That is really, really solid. Ah, look at Dukes leading the team. UTSA gets run over. 66 points on Texas State. We even beat a power five school. Seven and five is a steady improvement. Not bad for Kevin Dukes. 3,800 yards, 36 touchdowns, 13 picks. Amazing season, amazing improvements. He also scrambled for 700 yards again, but this time he had over a four average. Canary just doing his thing. That's what I love about our running back. They don't need to change the world, but even then, 5.6 average and 5.4. Doyle as our main target, 917 yards for him. John Moore in the slot with 587. Tavita Mobley is transferring from South Dakota State to San Diego State. Duan Tremblay is also transferring here. He just asked if he could get another car. Oh, that really, really stinks. Wow, Trent Jackson up to a 96 overall as a junior. Kenny Guerrero going plus four. Doyle up to a 92. John Moore up to a 92. Dakari Fork going up to an 89. Kevin Richardson looking nice. These are all players that will be there the final year. Minus Telek Lockett. 86 overall. He also has 92 awareness. More than likely be a 99 by the time he's a senior. Wow, look at us. B plus, A minus, and B plus. I don't think we're looking at a 99 overall, but we're going to be damn close to it. We're starting off with a big win. Let's keep the momentum. My expectation for this season is just to finish ranked if we can. Ooh, 12-0, rank 8 in the nation. I think you guys are cool with doing the 12-team playoff this year. We could even go back-to-back. -back. Dukes led the nation in passing yards. 
55 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Like, this is phenomenal. Wesley ran for 779. Dukes scrambled for 541. John Moore had nearly 1,500 yards as a junior. Doyle had a bit of an offseason, 457 yards, but I'm sure he'll bounce back. And Kenny Guerrero led the team in tackles again. Am I surprised? Well, he tied with David Parks. He had 24 TFLs, and it was Jakari Fork who led the team with six and a half sacks. Rhett Williams uh, led the team with three interceptions. First up for us, it would be 11th seed Michigan State. How do teams even compete with this? Michigan State did come out of the gates really, really strong, even taking a pretty decent lead. I forgot he was a lefty. <laughs> Dukes played amazing though, pretty much made every pass that I needed of him, and he even showed me he could get it done on the ground with the legs. Final score in the first round of the playoffs was 27-25 South Dakota State. In the second round, we're up against the third seed, Texas A&M Aggies. We again had to go for it on fourth down, but got stopped on the goal line. But that's exactly why we built the trenches the way that we did, and we were able to get a safety after back-to-back -back blitzes. Again, we would find ourselves up by two, running out the clock with about two minutes left. But after some good first downs, we were able to barely snag the win against A&M. Oh, these games are getting hard. <laughs> what a game. GG's Texas A&M. And for a shot in the national championship, we had to take down Notre Dame. How do you get two penalties in a row? First and 30. Notre Dame definitely did show some heart, but out of the three games we had played, they were by far the most manageable. He's still going, what a play. And the final score was 42 to 31. With Alabama barely scraping by against Air Force, we had our national championship opponent. No way, bro. Doyo end zone. Fumble, get on it. Yes. Good defense. The blitz works again. Throw it low. Bell, down the sideline. Hold on. Biggest step back. Cheese of all time. Surely this is seven, boys. Yes, come on, man. Why did they do that? Oh, that was silly from Bama. Come on, Doyle. I need a big play. Big play, Doyle. Big play, Doyle. Wide open. Down the sideline. 20, 10, 5. They're not really stacking the D-line. This looks great for Kaneri. Kaneri straight in. There was not a game that came easy just then. Yes, we won the national championship, but we had to fight every step of the way. But just like that, South Dakota was on top of the college football landscape. The thing is, we still got to see what happens everybody's senior season. We have not hit our final form yet. Dukes led the nation in yardage again. 5,200 yards, 64 touchdowns and 10 picks. 935 yards for Canary, 783 for Cunningham. John Moore with 1,600 yards, 19 touchdowns. Doyle was 708 and 12 touchdowns. Now remember that the stats are kind of inflated a bit because we did play 16 games in this season. Guerrero 27 TFLs and Rhett Williams leading the team in picks again. Best part is everybody came back for their senior season. Doyle is up to a 98, Guerrero's a 98, Trent Jackson, who doesn't get talked about enough, is a 99. There's a lot of 90s here, including our boy Kevin Dukes, who is sitting at 99 awareness. Okay, we're gonna start the season ranked 12. That's very high praise. We are a 99. I was not expecting that, but after the upgrades, it kind of makes sense. Oh my goodness. Okay, again, we are 12 and 0. And that's why we came back for his senior season. Kevin Dukes wins the Heisman in a landslide. 4,700 yards. About time my dude got noticed. Oh, and we got to verse Alabama right out the gate. Uh-oh. <laughs> this isn't looking good unless we can bring it back really quickly here. I don't think they can get Doyle here. I had circle wide open. That's Doyle again. That's a big play. Oh, he dropped it! He dropped it, bro! Seven! No way, man. Strip, strip, strip. The blitz is too much for their O-line. I think we get a stop here. Time out. Nobody's open. Okay, that's a lot of yards. Coach came straight back out in the same play again, which I'm not surprised at. 
We have burners out here. We're gonna throw it up. Please have the distance. We do! John Moore! Bama did the same thing last year where they just made a really bad defensive play with like less than two minutes left. The blocking's fantastic. Now we run out the clock. And we're in! Get everybody back. Every man, woman, and child get back there right now. The running back's not gonna make a play, so Richardson is gonna bring him back. They're gonna go for a Hail Mary. That's not it, Chief. That's not it, Chief! We were down two possessions with like three minutes left and still came back and won the damn game. Ah, oh, this, this, <laughs> this is gonna get ugly from the looks of things. 24 to six and a half. All right, back to back, not too shabby. Uh, we didn't really need to muck around in the postseason that much this year. Now, I know you guys are all keen to see where our players are getting drafted. Dukes led the nation again with 5,200 yards, 46 touchdowns, and six picks. Dukes also scrambled it for nearly 900 yards on a 5.5 average. John Moore with 1,600. Doyle with 1,500. I told you he'd be back. The blockers all did amazing. A bunch of TFLs. Guerrero leading again. Four and a half sacks to Patrick Davidson. Seven interceptions to Rhett. He is going to be a steal in the later rounds. Dukes broke four passing records. Moore broke six receiving records. Tillery even broke a pick record. Three first rounders, Guerrero, Doyle, and John Moore, which is crazy because that means our quarterback dropped all the way down to the fifth round. Kevin Dukes a bit of a steal in the fifth. Trent Jackson going in the second round. Tim Edwards in the second. Falk in the second. Dusty Hill also in the second. Demarcus Bell going in the fourth. Kinnery, Dukes, and Pope all in the fifth. That's a good fifth round right there. Kevin Richardson and Brooks Larson in the sixth round. Wesley Cunningham, our backup running back, going in the seventh. Fellas, if you enjoy this kind of content, the new style of the rebuilds, make sure you let me know by dropping a like and letting me know in the comment section as well. But if you made it this far into the video, you are the real MVP. Hope the rest of your day's awesome. And from me personally, I'm out. Peace.